It is the award-winning Go Show. We thank you for being with us. We celebrate all things outdoors in this beautiful outdoor playground of a state that we live in. You can find us on social media, facebook.com forward slash the Go Show with Mike Russell, and on Instagram at the Go Show with Mike Russell. YouTube, that's right. We are now updating YouTube. It's only been four years, so, hey, you know, we, we got around to it. It's okay. One of the videos you can see right now is of Ron Nixon. Ron Nixon is with Broadhead Nation. You're the, you're the uh, dadman, you call yourself? Uh, I I don't call myself. I've been that's been coined. It was a, it was assigned to me. I like it though. Yeah. Yeah, you got to run with that. Uh, now, I'm, I'm the administrator of the page, and I act like everybody's dad, so it turns into dadmin really quick. I don't know. What so happens? I, when you're, what's what happens when you're a middle aged man? I guess I've got to play. I've got to play dad on this one because uh, there are definitely two sides to this issue. So I'm talking about the sure. trail issues. So I had Kurt Davis on uh, 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 last week, and we talked about uh, the trail cam proposal, trail cam ban proposal, right. which is up for uh, public comment right now. And Ron reached out to me and said, hey, listen, do you, would you mind if I give my people's side of this argument? And of course, real quick, though, uh, Broadhead Nation, how many how many are in this group and uh, and how do we get involved in that? So it's on uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Broadhead Nation. Um, it is a private group. It's not hidden. You can find it. You just got to look for it. Um, or you can just go into Facebook and search for about Broadhead Nation. Um, we're a social media page. We're a, a hunting group. Um, we're all about everything that's positive in the outdoors. Um, we don't do hate speech. We don't do small bait buck shaming. Um, anybody wants to post any kind of a success picture, they're welcome to. We have uh, hunters all over the country. Now we are based out of Arizona. That's where our roots are. Um, but we're 24,000 almost right now um, nationwide we have administrators that watch it almost 24 7 um, there's no f bombs dropped on the page um, we delete guys for calling out uh, the hate speech um, we delete guys for for uh, you know the small buck shaming we've got kids posting their first kills in Kentucky yeah. Uh, does being shot and it's it, it's just a great place that somebody can go and, and, and post their success and share their success um, without getting, you know, Aunt Sally saying, oh, I can't believe you killed that poor deer, poor Bambi. So um, uh, <laughs> his family isn't, family isn't always supportive in what we do. So, okay. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm, it's a great group is let's get, but let's get to it. We're, we're limited on time here. we got about, about eight minutes here. I want, I want to get to this. The trail, the proposal for the trail cam ban was voted five Oh by the commission to open it up for public comment. And right. so public comment is open until the end of the month. So we have a few days left and Ron Nixon, you have the floor, my friend go. Well, you know, realistically the, the big push is coming and we're not sure the, we're not completely sure the sources of this. Um, the pushes on fair chase is what everybody continues to say. Uh, the in interesting fact is fair chase is not something that is individualized. It's something that, that that's kind of determined by a group by the whole. Um, and some of the hunting organizations out there, um, Safari Club International, Boone and Crockett, you know, the record book holders. Uh, and it, specifically, the one I like to refer to uh, is kind of the most conservative of all of them. And that happens to be Pope and Young, you know, they, you know the archery uh, record book holders. Um, they actually came out with a, a comment recently, probably in the last couple of weeks, talking about fair chase and related to trail cameras. And the one thing that they said is that trail camera use is fine. They said trail camera use with, uh, the live action or the cellular communicating trail cameras, the ones that will actually, you know, transmit images instantly to your email or a text message um, are the ones that they have an issue with. And basically what they said is that if somebody were to receive an image and pursue that am animal instantly and successfully harvest that animal, then that would not be eligible for their quote unquote record books. Because so, they were eating in the take of that animal. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, you've got, you know, for example, a bull elk will show up to a water hole and they can drink for 25, 30 minutes because um, they drink every other day in the wintertime. So, you know, if you get an image saying that there's an elk at a, at a spot and you know you can get there, get there within 15 minutes, the elk is still drinking and you, and you take them out, then sure, I can understand how that's fair chase issues. Um, but checking a camera every two weeks and pulling data and finding the images there to tell you what has been visiting in the past doesn't guarantee anything in the future. Agree. Uh, now, now yeah, anybody, I want to interrupt you real quick, just, just so we're, we're all clear here. I do not have a dog in this hunt by any stretch. I don't care about trail cameras. I don't use trail cameras. Don't care. Um, right. I, 
I'm on air seven days a week. I don't have time for any of that noise. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't have a dog in that, but I, but I want to, I want to put you in the shoes of somebody say, uh, that is anti hunting or, or not yeah. even if maybe they don't have a dog in the hunt and they learn that, wait a second, yeah, hunters can put up a camera where they're going hunting to take pictures and find out where the animals are and then go up like a week later and then go up to that place or, or one of their five trail cameras that they have that had the most stuff. Wait, where is that fair? They're already using rifles. Now I'm, I'm saying this as a non hunter looking at this issue going, yeah, why would you want to use a camera? That sounds like it's unfair. You said that. Well, all it is really is a scouting tool. It's just telling us what's in the area. It's not going to guarantee any, uh, the presence of humans in the field automatically changes patterns of animal um animals know what a travel trailer sounds like and a generator running at it they know what campfires smell like they know what the sound of a of, of a polaris razor running down the road is they know what quads it's are big ones do yeah well <laughs> exactly and as they, they get smarter, know what that sounds like <laughs> but the advantage of having a trail camera out there is 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 kind of part of that north american wildlife uh model of, of conservation and it's, it's to make sure that you ensure the population maintains. Um, giving us trail cameras, giving us the opportunity to focus on areas that have the most mature animals. Taking out the mature older animals is part of that model. Keeping the young bucks, keeping the young you know spikes and two points in, in, in the, or the, the young bulls, keeping that crop of youth alive is part of that model. So giving us the opportunity to, to take, I mean, you take a bull elk like the one I killed in 2017, he was 14, 15 years old. He was probably not even fertile at the time. Was that, was that because of a trail cam? Was it because of a trail cam? Was that no. chest? Did you use the trail cam? I had trail cameras on the water hole. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was, it, but that that elk was not patterned. Um, he would come in at three o'clock in the morning. He'd come up at two o'clock in the afternoon. He came in on Thanksgiving Day when I passed him. Um, and that's the thing. Just because you have it, a picture of him, doesn't mean anything. I had. Uh, just recently, I was out trying to hunt some desert mule deer out in the desert uh, out west out here and um, had a buck come in uh, December 31st at noon. Had a buck come in, that same buck, January 3rd at noon. So that's a two-day break. So I'm thinking, okay, 4th, 5th, he's going to be there on the 6th at noon. So I show up and I sit there on the 6th and nothing came in. Gee, I thought they're perfectly patternable and you can kill anything off of the pictures. In the okay, the Captain oh. As of let me let, let's I, I get your point on that, but I, I do want to move on once again. I'm just playing devil's advocate here because yep. you don't have a dog in the hunt. So yep. put yourself in the in the landowner, you're a cattleman up there, you're a cattle rancher up there. Sure. And this is where your cattle go to drink. And yep. so now you're now you're dealing with people messing with your now you know as a rancher. Now I know it's messing with patterns because it's messing with my cattle, my livelihood. I will always I will always side on the side of small business. I business owners and cattle ranchers. They have a big place in my heart. So what do you say to them? Um, I'll say to them the same thing I say to almost anybody when it comes up to this. Um, first of all, there's not a lot of cameras on dirt tanks. It's too hard to try and pattern on a giant dirt tank, too hard to try and capture images. So I highly doubt that there's three or four, much less 30 or 40 cameras on a dirt tank that cattle will visit. Um, and if there is by chance a couple of cameras that are getting checked, if we show up and cattle run off the water and we check out, you know, trade out our memory cards, I guarantee you the next picture on the memory card a week and a half later when we check it is a cow drinking in that water. Because the cow will sit across from the, the tank, 100 yards out, mooing at us while we're checking the camera real quick, making sure the batteries are fresh and making sure the card's clear. And yeah, it's 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 really not that invasive if if but what do you say to a cattle rancher that says it is like yeah you, you can't call the guy a liar so i mean um, it, I, i've actually and that's actually the interesting thing i've reached out and i've put i've, I've put it out there several times to cattle ranchers hey if you have problems if you have issues if there's things that need to be cleaned up bring me in i mean i just we talked about what i've got i've got a, a, a twenty four thousand members I can rally troops. I can get people in. I can. Do you need? Do you need cleanup work? Do you need fence work done? What What can we do to help? Um, so you know, cows coming in, cow going out all day long. It happens anyhow. So let's take the cameras out so people can come and walk laps around the tank instead to do their scouting instead of just checking a me memory card on a trail camera real quick for three or four minutes and then leaving. So it, it's it's as you take cameras out, you're going to put people out there 
more invasive, if in my opinion. Um, so I, I just, if trail cameras don't work, why do we, why do we get so many images of cattle and in game on them? If they're, if they're that invasive to animals, how can we have so many animals in our images? Okay. Here's Ron Nixon. You, you're the administrator of Broadhead Nation, a fantastic Facebook group of 24,000 strong. I highly recommend that you get in there. We're going to continue this conversation and we're going to continue it with, is there any middle we can find on this issue and if you want to hear that answer you're going to get over to youtube and you're going to check out the video you're going to go to facebook.com with mike russell and check out that coming up next we got the outdoor headlines and we're going to do a little something fun the top five tournament poachers fishing tournament poachers of the year it's coming up next right here on the go show stay tight all right, buddy. Now we can just now we can just riff. So uh, let's let's jump into that if we could. Um, yeah. Is there is there a middle ground? Because it seems like the commission is saying, okay, we got we're looking twenty years down the road. We see how the winds of public opinion are changing when it comes to our way of life. So where do we can we do to kind of post not mean postpone that, but run that down? Is there any type of middle ground you can see? You know, I think the middle ground originally that everybody was leaning towards was, you know, a seasonal usage or a seasonal ban, basically, you know, start of the season to the end of the season. Some people were saying August 1st through November 30th. Some people were saying uh, that that couldn't be used. Some people were saying September 1st through December 30th. So, you know, in the proposal, they actually came out with a August 1st through January 30th. So at this point in time, now the only alternative that they offered at the beginning was basically their band eight months out of the year. And so you can only use them four months in the year or five months in the year. So yeah, whatever. Um, but if that, what, if that time frame was changed, would that be, do you think that would be acceptable to people? I, I think the problem is if you start trying to adjust time frames and say, okay, you can only have a trail camera out, um, it has to be pulled 48 hours before your hunt. Well, there's still going to be trail cameras out everywhere. So I, I don't see a middle ground. Um, I, I don't see the, per you know, if, if I do, you know, and I like late archery elk hunts in November. So I have to pull my cameras July 31st for my hunt that's happened in November. That's not going to give me any information. So if that's the goal is to handicap the hunters, handicap the people that pay for the wildlife management that we have in this state, then that's what they're succeeding in doing if there is a middle ground. Okay, uh, now, I'm, just, I'm not okay. sure that there is. No, I want to go there. Uh, I want to go yeah. there. If you don't see there's middle ground, that's fine. If it, but here's here's my issue. They know that your Arizona Game and Fish Department does not receive a dollar from the general tax funds. They know right. where their money comes from. Right. They 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 know. So they're not stupid. They understand that. I, why would we want to cut off our arm to save our hand? We're not going to do that. I, I don't think they're in the business of taking away just to tick everyone off and to prove a point and you were bad. So we're going to spank you. There has to be a reason beyond this. If they are going to tick off their money tree. You know, the only thing I can speak to that um, with, with remaining polite and not pointing fingers. Okay, is that I, I, I know it's a personal vendetta. I, I, I know, I, and, and I won't say by anybody in, per, in particular, but it's a personal vendetta by people that hate trail cameras. And I use the word hate simply because they pull up to a spot where they want to check a water hole by walking around and looking for tracks. And they see a couple of cameras there. And I don't know if that's because they're looking at going, oh my God, my spot's ruined now because there's a guy with a camera here. Or, oh my God, there's a guy that's already looking at this spot. Um, uh, people that, that don't want trail cameras in the field are adamant about it. And they're the ones that are squawking the loudest. You know, this is, this, this is one of those situations. Okay, uh, so it's not a personal vendetta by the commission. You're saying it's personal vendetta by people that are bringing it to the commission. People that don't like trail cameras. There's, there are people out there that don't like trail cameras. I, okay. I, I won't like say, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to point fingers. Um, could it be commissioners? Sure. Could it be people on the game and fish department? Sure. Could it be people in their fair chase committee? Absolutely. Um, are there people, regular hunters that are on my Broadhead Nation page that that don't like trail cameras? Absolutely. Every time I put a post out saying, hey, rulemaking open, uh, is open, send in um, your, your opinions, you know, rulemaking at azgfd.gov. Um, anytime that I say that, 
I get overwhelming response of, yeah, this is ridiculous. Why, why, why are they trying to do this? And then about 10, 15% of the time, you'll see people saying, yeah, I hate trail cameras. They need to be banned. Go away forever. But it's on, and I, I think it's on both sides. It, it's on both sides to understand one thing is that I saw, um, I saw Terry uh, Herndon. I saw his, uh, what is it? Change.org petition. It's got like 7,000 signatures on it. Right. And it has just the comments are unbelievable how just right. yeah, they're passionate from both uh, passionate on this issue. Um, that's the wrong place to do it. That's it the is. Well, it is. It, it, you it, need, it, you it, need it, to get it, to the Game and Fish site to actually voice your opinion on it. It is, it is public opinion. And Terry Terry actually shared that uh, that change.org petition that was started by Stephen Miller. Um, he runs a blog, Bow Honey, Bow Honey in Arizona. Okay. Uh, or yeah. bow hunting and easy. He started that petition. Terry oh, just I it was Terry's. I apologize. I oh, thought yeah. Terry, yeah, Terry, Terry shared that on from Stephen okay. Miller, right. um, who's, who's a buddy of mine. And um, it's uh, it, it's it, it, it is, but it is, it is public opinion. It is 7,000 people. So by signing that change petition, what Stephen is able to do is turn around and email everybody and saying, Hey, okay, you voiced your opinion on the petition. Now you need to email. We'll make it azgfd.gov. That's where it may. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. I'm not exactly. saying don't get on there and comment. Right. I'm saying if you want to be heard, because I guarantee you, there's no commission in any branch of government that's going to go to change.org. It's a joke. They're not going to exactly. go there. And say, well, gee, there's a lot of support over there. No, they're like, no, well, they, they look. Yeah, they my can go there and they can find 300,000 signatures on change.org to ban mule deer hunting in the state of sure. Arizona from every sure. anti hunting organization on the planet. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're not going to lend a lot of weight. Well, let's talk about is. those hunting organizations, though. Those anti-hunting organizations, they're not small. They got a lot of reach, and they got I a agree, lot. They have the political winds behind their backs right now. And, I mean, they, they're really, really gearing up to make some changes here. So it, how, how would we do that? How would we look at something like this, make a lot of noise about it? Arizona wants to use cameras to shoot animals. Are you sure we need to make noise on this or do we need to work with the commission and say we need to find a middle ground? Because if everyone's saying there's no middle ground, then it's just going to go away. So to that, I'll say, first of all, cameras don't shoot animals. I understand. I understand. <laughs> um, yeah, I and know. then the other thing is, you know, do we want to be the first domino to drop? Shouldn't we unite as hunters and as sportsmen and say, you know what? This is not the right ban. This is not the right law. This is an overreach of authority. We want to stand together and stand up for hunters' rights and show that united wall and that united front against any anti-hunting organization. I Simply agree. We were, able, we were able to stand up and stand up for what was right and, and say that, you know what, a trail camera is just a camera in the field. It doesn't guarantee anything. It doesn't do any harm. Anybody who gets irritated that they are in the field when they walk by, it's not like the camera just shouted out to them, you're a ninny. I mean, it didn't happen. So who, who cares that there's a camera on a water hole? Why does that bother people? Okay, it's, it's, it's just okay. like a it's, it's just like a post on social media. If you don't like it, just walk on. The if you don't like a post on social media, scroll on. Understand? We're we're looking at a thirty thousand foot view here. Trail cams aren't the issue. If you want to say you're talking about the the hunters uniting, the hunters get just a great wall to defend hunting. I'm all for it. I'd stand that wall all day. I'm all about it. But if you want a great opportunity, want to find one hundred fifty million dollars to stand up against those anti-hunting organizations, which right. is their annual budget of one of the big ones. Uh, okay, then start. how do we start? Because they're, 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 they have law dogs everywhere, and they're waiting for their opportunity to just pounce. So how do we do that then? I, I think this is, a, this is a good step to, to unite. It really is. Um, I, I've reached out to several organizations trying to get their help, and they're and, and organize. I'm not going to name names simply because I'm not getting the support and the backing that I thought I would. Yeah. Um, because they're 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 living on the misinformation. Um, there's plenty of hunters' rights organizations out there that are just living on the misinformation that's being fed to them um, through the department. Honestly, um, then how about we fund a study? Then how about we fund a study? That's I think that's it. So forget about change.org. It's a bunch of nonsense. Change.org. Right. I mean, how about we get a uh, a GoFundMe, a Kickstarter, or something like that to actually fund enough biology, biological research on this to see if it does change patterns, if it does affect the the uh, the basically the great circle of life in Arizona and all 100, uh, 820 species that we have here, and actually right. fund the study. And then who wins? Who wins? It's fine. Okay, great. Trail cams actually have impact negatively this, 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 or they don't. And I, and I can almost, and I can, well, if you want to start the GoFundMe, I'll promote it. Okay. Uh, 
you start the GoFundMe and I'll promote it. But I, I don't honestly think you'll find the science that everybody's looking for. Um, simply because we've, you know, I've worked with enough trail cameras and I've ran enough trail cameras and I know enough people that have to simply say, it's just, it's just not going to have the results that everybody expects. Then that's, you know? that, then that, isn't that the end goal? I think that's the end goal. Sure. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah. if, if, if you, if I say fund the buy, find the, fund the research and it shows that it's trail cameras aren't doing anything to anything. Right. Fantastic. Then right. okay. Win, win, win. Everybody wins. Everybody is in the right in this. Well, way. I guess, I guess the problem is where do you find the static? Are, are you have to put somebody 700 yards downwind of, of a, tra of a water hole, cutting scopes for 10 days straight to watch the animals that come in on a water hole that doesn't have a trail camera versus a water hole that does have a trail. So you, well, it's just, it, well, you, you follow what I'm saying there? Way. Do I think a water okay. hole? I'll tell you where I find that the same place I find um, if I see a blank piece of land and I'm like, I want to build a house there, but I don't know how to do that. I hire the people that know how to do that. I don't know how to find statics and all that. I actually re rely on biologists. Trust me, Arizona it can't be the first one to raise their hand and say, we need to do a study on trail camps. I mean, there's there's entire Midwest states that are probably just love trail cams because they they're they're swatting away deer because they're just so thick and they understand yeah, that trail cams might help them aid in that the, the, the like. I mean, there's got there has to be research. I, I just haven't seen it, and I've done and I've done a lot of looking. Um, okay, yeah, I haven't seen it, and I've done a lot of looking. You know, and, and talking about Midwest and and, and Texas and, and Eastern states, a lot of private property. So uh, whether they're banned or not on private property, people are going to run them anyhow. And I think that's the problem that's going on here is whether it's banned or not. I think people are going to use them anyhow because Absolutely. now they're trying. Now they're trying to say, okay, we're going to ban them, you know, in the images for the use of assistive take um, only. But for people who just want to have a trail camera out there for wildlife watching or bird watching or whatever, it's fine. Okay. So the people that pay the bills for the game and fish department, the hunters, are the ones that are not allowed to use cameras anymore. But the people that are bird watching who buy a camera, and none of that camera revenue or tax revenue from that camera goes towards wildlife in the state of Arizona. Those people are fine. Once again, it's the, the providers that are getting their hands slapped. And it's the ones that are not providing that are allowed to use. It's honestly, it's discriminatory. It is discriminatory in nature. I'm going to get slapped if I don't ask the question. So is a season for elk and a season for deer discriminatory? Because that's your view. You are being limited. A game and fish is telling you, you can't go hunt deer unless it's on this week. And if you, the get and, and, and the only pro, well, no, <laughs> you're kidding I me. Ask you, I, come on, man. You're I mean, saying, I mean, it, you're saying a, a season for, uh, for hunting them is, is, is discriminatory. You're saying, correct? Say again. You're, you're saying a, a general hunting season, not a trail camera use season. No, I'm right? just talking about them. Just, well, I mean, okay. I can compare the two. You see the line I'm drawing. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, we also pay for the privilege to hunt. We also pay for the privilege right. to have a license to do so. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're providing yes. by buying the licenses and buying the tags. But when you do when you do that, you're essentially signing up. It's kind of like those terms of use on iTunes or Facebook or something like that. Whatever gets so bad, you're like, uh, you agree to that. But here's the issue: that bird watcher at any point in time, that wildlife watcher, they can go buy a license. They can go buy an over-the-counter archery deer tag, and they can join along with us just by having the privileges that they bought and paid for. So it's not discriminatory because it's open to everybody. So anybody can do it. Okay. The state has to, you know, it is. It's in the Constitution, the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. That no law can be passed unless it applies to everybody equally. So now you're going to put a law out there saying hunters can't have cameras out there, but wildlife watchers and bird watchers can. Anti hunters can have cameras out there. So it's a law that they're trying to pass that doesn't apply equally to everybody. And there is a way of defining that I am not a wildlife watcher and, and not a bird watcher. Yeah, I'm not a wildlife that, that, bird watcher. Yeah, I'm not either. And, and and we define that with that little piece of paper that's in our wallet that says, I bought a hunting license. I paid for the privilege to hunt in this state. Mm -hmm. And because I have this privilege, I'm now being discriminated against. And there's a law out there that applies to me that doesn't apply to everybody equally. So if we want to get into constitutionality, 
we can go down that road as well. I mean, you can, uh, you, there's an argument for every, I mean, Ron, we have to, we have to be, it's okay. We're talking like big kids here and they, they understand yeah. every, there's not a law out there that applies equally to everyone. I mean, it's, it's really hard to find the, those laws except for, yes, you have to stop at a stop sign, but then same time you paid for a license to be able to do that. So the government can regulate that. So once we buy licenses and give the government the, uh, the ability to change the rules, we've handed it over to them. I mean, you think about that from, I mean, marriage all the way down to small business ownership to we handed government control of all of it. We handed government control of managing wildlife. So we kind of, that's the rules we agreed to. I understand. It's just at this point in time, we're allowing people to do things in the field with wildlife that they won't allow hunters to do. And I just, I just don't, I, I, once again, it's an overreach of authority. This okay. is just an, this is an overreach of authority. Um, this is nanny state politics. Um, and, and, on, it, and does Arizona want to see itself as the first domino to fall? This is happening in Arizona. Now you can't use trail cameras to go hunting with. Um, and next thing you know, boom, it's done in California. And boom, it's done. in the Trail cameras are allowed in California right now, Mike. Well, well, I also have to go to the attorney general to buy ammo in California. So, don't, I, okay, California is the wrong example. <laughs> yeah, but Calif you can use trail cameras in California, Mike. That's how silly this is. So, and we're talking about a state over there with what seven times the population of we have and let's touch on that they talk about you know the growth of the state of arizona okay growth of the state of arizona it is what it is right now we can round up and say we're eight million people in the state sure 7.8 million whatever eight million so what difference does that make we still only have a finite amount of wildlife we don't only have the amount of wildlife that we have they're still only going to issue so many permits and so many tags every year so it's not like if we have 16 million people in the state in 20 years that now they're going to put out 60,000 deer tags instead of 30,000. We still only have 30,000 deer that we can kill every year. Or 30,000 tags you can reduce. I honestly don't think population control is the issue. I, I didn't. Not I, population I, control. I'm, I'm saying it's not, it's not the issue. I'm saying it's those other 10 million people that are moving here is probably going to be the issue. Well, but. And it's that hasn't been, tags. But that hasn't been laid out clearly. It has to do with their, minds. I'm sorry? It has to do with hearts and minds and ballot boxes. I understand that. The, the, it's, the, uh, it's not, I mean, look, I mean, the, the situation that we find ourselves in right now really sucks. It's, it's, there's nothing, there's no really other way to paint that picture. It sucks. So do we, every time we, and or do we just every time, throwing, throwing mud at each other? And every time we give up a freedom, they come after the next one. And if it's trail cameras this time, well, maybe it's hunting around water next time because that's the conversation that's happening all over the place. Mm -hmm. Every time you look at an article, the article is, we only have a finite amount of water in this state. You know, this is an arid state. We don't have a lot of water. Why are we having it? You know, and then they talk about that there's only a finite amount of hunting that we can do in this state. And that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And yes, hunting in water is an ambush point. So if we're going to give up trail cameras next, they're going to come up. They're going to come with hunting water. And then so what is it after that? You say you okay. don't have a dog in the fight, but what happens What happens when you do have the dog in the fight? Because you do have the dogs. And they say, okay, you I've can't help a, the dogs anymore. I've got a big microphone to battle that. And I can yeah. I, can, I can have people on for, for discussion and to battle each other. That's fine with me. I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something about it and doing the best I can about it. I'm talking to the people that are making the decision, and I'm talking to the people that have opposing viewpoints. I mean, that that's really where we're at right now. And right. If, it, if, if they start – if uh, their, their job is to manage species of wildlife. That's their job, not to make our right. hunting life happy and easy. And that's just not the way it goes. And the same as a, same as the state and the, the interstate has to run the roads and make sure they change laws. And Hey, they took away our ability to talk on the phone this year while we, uh, while we're driving down the road. Yeah, so did. that, so, I mean, that's, that's, you can't text and drive now that's illegal. So they, they, they take and they take, I, I get it. I see your point. But it's not it's not unique to government control that they want to look at banned trail cameras. By the way, the trail cameras aren't banned yet. They're still doing public. No, I, I know they're not. I know. Let's get loud. So let's get loud. If you want to get loud, let's get loud. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm helping you get loud, buddy. I appreciate the microphone. <laughs> but that's it. I, I think if you say there's no middle ground, I mean, there's basically it's just kind of a wait and see thing. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm not saying there isn't a middle ground, but I, I just don't think the middle ground they offer is, you know, let, let's open the table and discuss a middle ground. Oh, love Definitely. it. 
How do but you they're do not offering, but we're not being offered them. We're not being offered that. It was at the commission meeting. I, I watched it live. It was option one, we'll do a seasonal ban, or option two, or option one was a complete ban, and option two is a seasonal ban. And yeah. they voted yeah. on option one specifically. They okay. did not put forth option two. There is no seasonal ban being offered right now. So let's go back to the table and figure out how we can fix this. Fantastic. Um, because I, think, I think there is a way to fix this. I think there yep. is a way. If, they're, if their huge concern is 20 and 30 and 40 trail cameras around a water hole, which once again, you talk to as many outfitters, guides, experienced hunters in the state, they've never seen 30 or 40 trail cameras on a, on a water hole, period. Um, if there's a way to fix it, let's find it. Let's sit down at the table and find a way. Um, once again, I just. I love what you're saying now. You're singing my song, buddy. Hey, I, I'm willing to, I, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've reached out to different personnel at the game and fish department um, from the phone call taker to the uh, pretty high ups. I won't name names or positions, but pretty high up in the department saying, Hey, bring me in, get me involved. I have a voice. I have, uh, you know, I, I have an audience. I have a, a, a group of 24,000 nationwide, mm -hmm. probably 18,000 in Arizona alone. Um, we can, we can have conversations. I can take the, the, I can take the opinion to, so, you know, the big push right now is, well, let's go back to the way our ancestors hunted. So we're just going to ignore all technology altogether. <laughs> Come on, man. Onyx and go. So you're a muzzle loader hunter. You're going to go back to a flintlock rifle where you have to light the little fuse and <laughs> blow That's on it so you can shoot? Fun. <laughs> is that how we're going to do this now? Um, a, a modern compound bone, we're going to get we're going to get rid of that because now we have to go back to a, a – Oh, a, come a, on. A switch. With oh, a couple God. of strings touched. Yes, but seriously. So then let's go back to, okay, so here's the other argument. Let's go back to the way our ancestors did it. Okay, how far back are we going? We're going back 80 years ago, where I can show you pictures of trucks loaded down with seven, eight, nine, ten mule deer bucks killed by two guys because there was no limits. Oh, I look at those, and frankly, those old pictures frustrate the hell out of me. Imagine the populations of deer we could have now if people weren't allowed to just kill willy nilly 80 years ago. Well, you want to go back further than that? Okay, let's go back. Let's go back, uh, let's go back 150 years ago, where we almost wiped out. The American bison. Let's go. Do we going back to those ancestral days? Oh, let's go back <laughs> further. Let's go back to Native Americans who used to drive buffalo and wild game over a cliff so they would die. Rod, yeah, I breath, buddy. <laughs> I think we do fair chase and we do humanitarian better now than we ever have. I, agree I think we. I think we are. We do fair chase. We do humane kills. I think we do. We do better now than we ever have. I agree. And, trail cam and I think trail cameras aren't part of it. Trail cameras are just telling us where we can focus to find the mature animals that we want to take out. That's all. That's all this really does. And I'll, I'll okay. breathe now. Thank you, my man. Whoo, you know, I'm going to take your blood pressure. I'll send you uh, <laughs> here, man. Okay. So hey, it's 162 over 112. I'm fine. But I want to, I want to, I want to just focus on the one thing because yeah. for the, I would say for the majority, and I give everybody in our crew always, I give them the benefit of the doubt. But there are those morons that those, those bad apples. And I hate that because there's so many more than just bad apples. There's a group that, um, that don't use trail cameras ethically, that don't take ethically. And those are the ones I think that, we need to a do something about because those are the ones that the groups that want our way of life gone. Those are the ones that they focus on. So it's hard to just say, come on, nobody's using trail cams to do this, that, and the other thing when you know in your soul that they are. And well, sure. I mean, is there an out, is, is there an outfitter out there possibly that checks the trail camera at three o'clock in the morning then checks a different one at four o'clock in the morning, checks the different one at five o'clock in the morning and found that a deer went from one spot to another spot to another spot. So they know the exact trail that they went on. Sure, theoretically. Um, is he working his ass off to figure that out and get that done? Yeah. Um, okay, so take the trail cameras away. What's that outfitter going to do? That outfitter is going to hire six or seven kids, 18, 19 year old, that want their foot in the door. And you'll have six or seven kids out there watching and following animals from a distance. And that's even more in invasive, if you ask me. Um, let, me, I, I, let, me, let, yeah. me let me wrap it up this way, I think. If, if they ban trail cameras because i know you're yeah. very successful you're a very strong hunter you're a good hunter that's why i'm taking you out for some upland hunting so i can humble you just a skosh 
<laughs> so let's if they ban trail cameras, is that really going to hurt the way you take animals, or is that going to hurt your ability to hunt and take animals? It or won't hurt my an overreach. This is a government thing. It's a government overreach. Um, will it stop my hunting? No. Uh, will it? Will it? Will, the only thing it's really going to do is going to hinder my scouting ability. Because yeah. look at me. I'm in a shirt and collar. I'm getting ready to put a tie on and go to work here in a half an hour. I work here. I work down in the valley. I work in Phoenix. I sell new homes. I work for a home builder. Um, I got to work five days a week. I get two days off a weekend. My time on that weekend is one day usually on the weekend I spend with the family. One day I'll scout or hunt. So my scouting day is very valuable. So can mm -hmm. I sit on a mountain and turn around with binoculars 360 degrees for 12 hours? Sure. What am I going to see in the thick brush of Unit 9 or Unit 6A? Not much. Or can I sit in a truck, run around and check maybe seven or eight trail cameras in that day and find out what's going on while I'm not there? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, does yeah. that guarantee that 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 I'm going to be able to kill one of these animals I find? No. And I can tell you honestly, in the last seven years, I've killed, I think, three animals that I've ever had on trail camera. And really, my success in the state of Arizona isn't all that great. I do a lot of out-of-state hunting where the, the pressures are different, private land hunting, that kind of thing. Um, so will I continue to hunt? Yeah. Do I feel like um, I'll be a little more handcuffed? Yeah, I won't have the intel that I that I used to have. Do you think um, it would impact their bread and butter? So now put yourself in the shoes of Game and Fish. Do, are, are people going to stop hunting if they ban trail cameras? I mean, because um, I think I honestly think it is a small portion, a small percentage of hunters in the state that actually use trail cameras. So I are, do too. are they going to lose revenue because of this? I think you'll see. Uh, I, I think some people will. I think the biggest thing you'll see is um, the uh, the commissioner's tags, the auction tags that go for big money that that put a tons of money, tremendous amount of revenue towards habitat and water development projects. I think you'll see those commissioner's tags go for lower and lower. Um, when there was the trail camera ban they put out three years ago, um, the bull elk tag went for 190,000 instead of the 250, 260. That was normal. Okay, good. Um, you know, you're on the right path. You're on the right path. Yeah. So going back to game and fish. So they see, oh my gosh, I'm looking at the chart here, revenue, and here's where we ban trail cams, and here's what happened to our revenue. Right. What are you game fish going to do? You see what I mean? Like, let the, let, I mean, even if it happens, we'll see what happens because they, uh, look, I, they have one I, mission, I think this is and that's conservation. And if it, if it impedes on their, their ability to, to fund conservation, trust me, it's coming back. Well, I, I think this is one of those, uh, I, I, I don't. I think this is one of those laws that once it's set, it's going to be set. Uh, six years from now, you could have complete five new commissioners in there and we could petition to remove the trail camera ban. And I doubt that it'll get done um, because it's such a hot right now. I think this is one of those things. Right now, not six years from now. No, well, no. I mean, next, you know, six years from now, it could be me and four other buddies on the commission. We completely reverse it. There you go. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. I, you know, I, you know, like it, it anybody be, wants Ron Nixon as a commissioner. It, it, I was just about to say, if they're dumb enough to put one of us on there, then okay, then well, it's it's on. Okay, <laughs> conservation might go bye bye with the two of us on <laughs> the commission, buddy. So, uh, yeah. but but I, look, the bottom line is we don't know. We don't know. The only thing we can do is get active. We have uh, we in every aspect of government, we have given them control. So uh, the only thing we can do is have our voices heard. Uh, yeah. We can get loud as we possibly can, and yeah. we can stay cool about it and not look like a bunch of unhinged, you know, gun-toting weirdos and actually bring evidence-based stuff that we talked about today to the forefront, and hopefully hopefully we win the argument. Like I said, I, don't, I, I see commissioner's side. I see your side. And we're going to have to see what happens. But uh, it, the public comment ends at the end of the month. And then, we, then we go, and then it depends on how many people are going to show up to that meeting. If they're going to get right. loud and try to sway some of those commissioners, that that makes sense. Yep. And when I, I get loud, I mean make your voices heard. That says I'm not not yeah, getting absolutely. You know, yeah. Yeah. Your, your torches and your pitchforks. We're going to the commission meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's correction at the commission meeting. Oh no 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 no. Oh my gosh. Yes, but it's probably done virtually anyway. So I mean it's right. It's, yeah. That, 
it's gonna have to shout into your microphone ron man it's it's been a it's been a great conversation man i appreciate you letting me play devil's advocate i appreciate let me challenge you a little bit push you a little bit and that's just you know i mean that's this no one learns unless that's done so i appreciate that man well, I, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Once again, uh, folks, join Broadhead Nation. We like talking hunting. And everybody, um, email in. It's, it's a quick email, rulemaking at azgfd.gov. All you got to do is send in a quick blurb. Hey, I do not support a trail camera ban. That's all you have to say. If you want to put out reasons, if you want to put out logic, you can. You want to put forth an argument and a discussion, you can. But really, all we need you to say is, I do not support a trail camera ban, period. And Here's a way to get uh, the commissioners to vote for a trail cam ban. Be a jerk on the comments. Yeah, let's not do that. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Kill them with kindness. It's the way to That's go. That's right. That's right. That's what my mama always said. <laughs> That's right, buddy. Hey, man, I appreciate you. 